In the year 1939, Dr. Thomas C. Polar came up with the idea to make a machine that could traverse the Arctic landscape. When the vehicle was being designed, engineers had to come up with a way to get it over rough terrain and ice gaps, so they made the front and back hydraulically move and drag on the ground to get it over holes and made large tires to get it over rough terrain. The design was very unique, especially for the time. The interior was fairly simple with basic work area, living space, and kitchen. In the back were two massive spare tires. Although the inside was simple, the way it was powered was quite unique, featuring two engines that would power four separate electrical motors under each wheel. The only other feature was a biplane on the roof, which could be lowered and flown around the Arctic. After the vehicle had been completed, on October 24, 1939, it was driven into the streets, but little did they know this journey would not prove successful. As the vehicle was designed a few years ago, but the team only decided to use it a few months before the expedition, leaving only six months to be constructed, which would cause many issues. They had no time to test it because they only had a few weeks to get it to Boston. They decided to drive it 16,000 kilometers, or about 994 miles, to Boston. Even though it may sound simple, it was a challenging and long journey just to get to Boston. Just a few days in, in Halt Wan, Indiana, all progress stopped because roads were too slippery because of heavy rain. Then, soon after, the cruiser slipped off a ditch into some mud where it was stuck for three days. Then, after it was pulled out, there was hydraulic damage and a dent, which delayed the trip even more. Then, after all that, the cruiser proved to be slower than intended. It was meant to travel 48 kilometers an hour, or about 29 miles per hour, but it could barely reach a fraction of that speed. The issue being, each electric motor only produced 75 horsepower, and since it was so slow, it began to back up traffic, causing one of the worst traffic jams of all time, backing up 70,000 cars. Finally, with two days to spare, they had made it to Boston. Now, there was no turning back. They were there and ready to go. After landing in Antarctica, while the cruiser was being taken off the ship, following the stream of bad luck, it fell through the ramp. But luckily, it was quickly pulled out. But this is only the beginning. Since the vehicle had been built quickly and had not been tested in snow, the first time it was seeing snow was just then, in the January of 1940. While the cruiser could drive on normal highways, it was extremely difficult to drive it over the rough terrain. The problem was the tires. They were built to absorb impact and be extremely strong. But the issue was they were smooth, with no gaps whatsoever, causing them to endlessly spin in this ice and snow. The reason for the smooth tires was since they had a short time to build the vehicle, they were forced to use a pre-existing design, built for swamp buggies. While putting treads on the tires would be possible, engineers thought they would fill up with ice and snow, but they had no time to test this theory, so they just went with it in an effort to get some grip. The crew put some chains around the wheels and doubled the front tires with spares, but it made almost no difference, and another problem was the weight difference between each section was very uneven, so the team decided to try and drive it backwards, which turned out to work better, and for its longest drive, the cruiser made it 148 kilometers, or about 91 miles, on a loop around the base, but driving backwards slowed it even more, and there was no way the cruiser would complete its extremely long expedition to the South Pole and back in reverse. So they parked the cruiser for good as a stationary lab. After the cruiser was abandoned, the exploration continued, although it did have to end early. And with World War II right around the corner, America no longer had an interest in faraway lands. The snow cruiser was last spotted 
in 1958 after being dug out, but currently its location is unknown, either being under the snow or at the bottom of the ocean. Although the entire expedition seemed like a great idea at first, it turned out to be a horrible idea in the end. The original design was fine, it was only the tires. If the tires had been good and had indents in them, the journey might have been more successful, as the cruiser couldn't even drive on normal roads properly. Everything seemed to go wrong in this journey. Although it was a massive failure, it would help with designing vehicles and other expeditions in the future. The cruiser was a very nice vehicle, but just some tiny flaws caused it to not work as it was intended. This journey could have been amazing, but unfortunately it turned out not successful at all. Thank you to all the sources on the screen currently. They will all be linked in description. Again, thank you to these sources for all the information in this video.